And we're continuing our conversation with Frank Ferrante. He is the subject of the must-see excellent documentary, May I Be Frank, a film about sex, drugs, and transformation. And I don't say that just because I'm raw vegan. It's an excellent documentary. Well, that's part of the reason. And Greg Marks is the filmmaker behind this documentary. So you guys have been on the road uh, showing this film and really having these uh, very intimate conversations with uh, the very. the very intimate with people who come to see it. Frank, talk about some of the more powerful moments you've experienced. Uh, well, some of the more powerful moments have been with um, with really young young people. Um, when I say young, you know, people in their twenties, and and uh, the two that come to mind uh, are these uh, young women in their twenties and their sisters, and um, their father had just died, and and um, uh, they came they came to me after the after the you know, after the Q and A, and they, they just came up and told me that their father had just died, and that he had he had a, a drug problem, and that they wished that he would have done what I did and, and that basically they they missed their, they were, and they were crying when they were doing this and one of them was embracing me from the side and it, and it felt like she was reaching for her father mm. and I, I I get that I get, I've been receiving that a lot with people transferring a sort of father image to me you know that, that they miss their father uh, there was one woman from from the cafe gratitude an Italian woman and um, um, and she was we were speaking in Italian and and uh, and um, and she was just you know she was just you know she was just saying how much she missed her father and that I reminded her of her father and she wishes he was still here and would I hold her and and I held her and and and, and I was speaking to her in, in Italian and um, and we're both crying you know and I and I and I said you know and I told her what a wonderful human being she was and that she. Uh, um, and that she was beautiful and intelligent, and 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 uh, and she says, "I wish my father was here to tell me that." And I told her, "He is. He's talking to me. I'm, he, he is him." And that was like a spontaneous moment. I, I mean, I don't talk that way, you know. And, and so things like that happen. And, and then, of course, there was this little girl um, 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 in one of the cities. I'd rather not mention. Maybe it's not a good idea. But she was in one of the cities recently, and and. Um, Six and three quarters. She was a little girl. I said, "Sweetheart, how old are you?" And she goes, six and three quarters." And and she asked me a question about my daughter. Was I still, as as I still having a, a loving relationship with my daughter? And and it turned out that her father was in jail for a very serious crime and would be for the rest of his life. So she's not going to see him. And and poignant a poignant experiences like that. That that you know. Once in a while, people will say to me, as, as this thing starts to take off, hey, Frankie, don't let it go to your head. Don't let it go to your head. And when things like that happen, it really precludes something. It's not like an egotistical experience. It's not like you're you know, Mick Jagger and I just sang Sympathy for the Devil for the 40th year in a row, and people will tell me how great I am. It's not like that at all. It's, it's, it's really it's so heartfelt. It's humbling, really. You know, you know, I don't walk out of Q and A's thinking, oh, I, you know, stick my thumb in a pie and pull out mm -hmm. a plumbing. What yeah. a good boy am I? It goes right to your heart, not it, your head. Yeah. yeah, and so that's not to say that there isn't some ego gratification with all these people seeing such nice things, but those moments um, are very grounding. Yeah. yeah. How are you processing all this? I mean, what when you go to bed at night? What goes through your mind? Because you're still on your journey. I'm way in my journey. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I, I still, uh, I've made some serious mistakes. Or let's just say uh, um, I'm not ready. I'm not done yet, you know. Um, and um, um, I'm still very much in, in, the, in a learning curve. I would be that irrespective of the project, but the project has definitely poured gasoline into the you know it's just got a high octane fuel in this bad boy now and and you know it's like i and the way i the way i deal with the process how am i processing it well i'm i'm not really sure how but the, but i see a therapist i go to i go to my 12-step groups i have these guys around me all the time mm -hmm. um you know and uh and um uh and and, and it's challenging sometimes you know, it's challenging. Oh, I'm sure, because you're talking about 
your story constantly. I mean, we just yeah. interviewed you for the hour before we're interviewing you now on the radio. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of reliving it. And then to be, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's gratifying also when people ask you questions, like we had callers with personal questions about their family members, but this is a, this is a lot. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And there are times I find myself running from it, um, in, in, in a, in a very innocuous way. Um, because in the film is a guy that's really broken. This guy that it's not that's not I didn't love myself at all, mm -hmm. and the, you, you don't I don't at least I don't think you make that transition from from virtual just you know teetering on the edge of death to all of a sudden nirvana and st you know sitting on the mountaintop at Spirit Rock contemplating my navel navel and <laughs> quoting the sutras you know <laughs> right. it doesn't it's not like that and it's you know and then. And so it's been a it's been a real it's it's a, it's still it's still in process, and and you know it's it's a, and I, we talked about this earlier finding center you know I come in you know I just you know I just as I said you know, like I started out with no self esteem now I got low self esteem and I got these people adoring me here and my ego's down here and somewhere in the middle lies the truth and I'm looking to meet that center mm -hmm. and fortunately I have people that that help me but. You know, one of the things I mention to people in the, in the in the theater all the time is that I'm healing right along with them. I'm a reflection of them, and they're a reflection of me. I am I am not a step higher or you know or lower. I just we're like, you know, we're here. We're in the same. If you notice, we're in the same boat here. Yeah. You know, and um, and it's funny that 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 when I tell people I'm not an expert on anything, the questions really start rolling in. Mm. That's uh, which I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, see, see, to me, it makes sense, and I think the power of this film and the Q and A that we do is that um, people are tired of of taking messages from someone who's like a demigod. Because I gotta be, you know, in all my years of being on a spiritual path, and uh, you know, practicing different ways and going to different workshops and teachers, like any person that holds themselves up there and pretends that they've got it all together is not only lying but I feel they're unrelatable and I think the power in Frank is that he's relatable because we all know deep down inside that we even even the person that seems to have the greatest life has probably just as great of issues to go along with that great life you know and so why play around with it why why let's drop the veil let's stop let's stop kidding ourselves there's more healing and relating than there is in anything else you know but you know in our culture we are raised in appearances are important and and uh, education and all these things that sort of make us who we are are important but you know what at the end of the day what it comes down to is whether you can enjoy that life or not and that's when it comes to relating and being in community and knowing that on the most basic level you're okay. Forget about all this other stuff. On the most basic level, your health, your mind, your emotional system, do you love yourself? Those things need to be in check. Otherwise, you're not love, You're not going to love life too much. Mm. It's, it's uh, so true. And we don't have much time left, but what's next for you guys? You're, you're trying to take it. Uh, you're going to do a road trip, a bus road trip, possibly go overseas, right. and then show the film in prisons? Yes. So I just want to... I'm going to change the word trying to what we're doing because <laughs> in this affirmation thing... Yeah, we just we sort of affirm you are doing this even before it is physically happened before we have any proof. This is how we create and we just say it out loud. But yes, um, between now and December, we have about 36 dates booked um, in the U.S. Uh, starting in 2011, we're doing two things. We're going to be uh, jumping on a May I Be Frank bus with a big bus wrap around and it. I love it. And we're going to be doing more of a linear tour of the country, starting down south because it's winter time, working our way up east and then back across. And um, and we're also going to be uh, hooking up with Jason Mraz, who's planning a sort of a beautiful festival, which we can't really talk much about, but we're going to be part of that, which is going to be happening in 2011. And yes, we've had so many requests to go to France, England, Germany, Australia, so we're planning to make that Hong happen Kong. too in the new year. Amazing. Yeah. And you're so right about the words, positive affirmation. Oh, yeah. You are going to do this. Words become things. Greg Marks is the filmmaker behind May I Be Frank, and Frank Ferrante is the subject of this incredible, incredible documentary. Be sure to see it and share it with all of your friends and family. Thank you both for this gift. Arrivederci.